What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Collider Interview Studio at Sundance 2024. I am lucky enough to be sitting with the team behind. I saw the TV glow. What an electric premiere last night. That audience went nuts for your movie. Yes. <laughs> that That's was really great. the only response I needed. Just like affirmative. That is what happens. Before we get into our conversation, I have to take a moment to thank the fine folks at Filmio for helping us get to Sundance this year. Filmio is breaking barriers right now by putting the power in the hands of creators and fans by giving them the ability to green light projects. So big thanks to them. And if you want to learn more about Filmio, check out their website, Film.io. Film.io, excuse me. All right, Jane, I'm going to give you the first question. It's the synopsis question because a lot of our audience is first going to be learning about your film via Sundance. So would you mind giving a brief synopsis? If that's even possible of I Saw the TV Glow because there's so much to explore in this world you created. I Saw the TV Glow is a movie about two lonely teenagers who find each other through their shared love of a strange kind of scary kind of sweet tv show uh they get together every week to watch it together um but when their obsession kind of gets out of hand their entire sense of reality kind of gets called into question you were prepared for that i'm very impressed i've been working on it for I a think, yeah i feel like yeah i've been trying to figure out a way to synopsize it for folks who have been asking i'm like i'm slowly getting there slowly getting there a question about making the move from first feature to second feature because i feel like there's a lot about that process that kind of needs to be demystified so what is something that you would say is a misconception about what it takes to get a second feature off the ground after a successful first feature but then i want to know something about your first feature that helped you get this movie made and the way you want it i think that most people don't really understand the sort of like strategy of kind of like the behind the curtains of, of the film industry. Um, and so I think it's all misconception because I, I think that they don't necessarily, like when I went to film school, I didn't learn about how to get a movie made. I learned maybe how to make a movie kind of, but I didn't quite learn um, anything about like the entire sort of like commercial capitalist infrastructure built around uh filmmakers and movie makers and so i i I think there's really no difference between the first short film you make the 10th short film you make the first feature you make the second feature you make because i think in all cases you are interacting with a for-profit commercial industry and you as an artist are choosing how uh, how to engage with that towards like whatever ends you might have so i think like i chose to make my first feature for almost no money so I could have complete artistic freedom. And that helped me get a second movie made that also had, uh, I, I think I had an unusual amount of artistic freedom to make this movie uh, because I had sort of proven my voice with the first feature. But I think there are a million ways to make movies, you know? I know people who make a movie every year for no money. Uh, so I think it's really like, to me, the most important question rather than waiting for a green light is just like finding your voice and what you need to say if you're an artist and then figuring out how to sort of um, be a spy in the, you know, to the gatekeepers who hold the power to, to get cool shit made. <laughs> be a spy to get cool shit made. I like that. Um, I'll build on that just briefly because you did mention that last night, I think it was during the the introduction, just how great it was having A24 as a partner and them giving you the opportunity to, to make the movie that you wanted to make as bold and daring as it is. What is something about the way they collaborate with their artists that you really appreciated and you're excited for more up and coming filmmakers with bold visions being able to experience when they work with them in the future. I just I just think that A24 has managed to brand themselves as like the place where at least in America uh you're going to see something that you don't expect. You're going to see something that's like defined by its difference from the mainstream um, I think it's become like colloquial in like Hollywood, right? Where people are sort of like, I want to be in an A24 type movie. And so like that kind of power of, of, of like the, the quote unquote brand 
signifying something new or something different or something a little bit transgressive is obviously really exciting when you're an artist trying to do exactly that. So I, you know, when I sort of after my first film, which again was a very micro budget, very small film, uh, did pretty well here at Sundance a few years ago. I knew that like the dream come true would be getting to make, you know, my like sophomore future with a company like A24. A24 movies being defined by their difference is something I'm going to remember and repeat at some point. I will toss a question to the two of you now because I'm sure the script for this movie was wonderful. But when I watch something like this and just like how st how distinct the atmosphere, the vibe, the colors, literally everything is, it makes me think it might be difficult to fully picture what this world is going to to look and feel like based on the page and the page alone. So what were some of your biggest burning questions for Jane when the script first came your way? I I had a bunch. I just, I read it a few times through before I felt like I really got it like all the way. Um, and I was, I would say I was hounding you a little bit about for answers. <laughs> just, uh, yeah. And I, well, to, to, to answer the question, question about the atmosphere part i do feel like it was it i could not have uh, like realized what i was walking into when i got on set and there was like the ice cream truck with the pink smoke and all that stuff but the script was pretty descriptive like there was a lot of that um visual stuff already there which is cool but yeah i, I had I had a lot of questions <laughs> trying to think of a specific i mean i don't i don't want to give anything away about the movie but um like deeper, deeper meaning questions. I mean, even after watching it, I still have a lot of questions. And I think that's one of the most exciting things in the world, being left with questions, wanting to revisit it again and get deeper and deeper with every rewatch. I feel like I did not when I read it, I didn't I, I knew that it was something that had so many questions in it, but I didn't feel any need to ask Jane those questions because I knew that like the questions would be answered by meditating on the script and figuring out how to believe in the world of the script and the the characters and figuring out the different worlds within it and how I could make those worlds real in my body. So even though there were things that maybe don't like make sense, I was thrilled by the parts that didn't make sense because I'm always so tired of like scripts that try to make sense out of like fear and embarrassment. And I was really glad that Jane was so bold and like not trying to explain uh, what really come down to like um, very complex and nuanced feelings that we can all relate to. So I knew that like they would be in me if I just like looked for them. So given how you approach the work here, when you first signed on, what quality of Maddie's were you most looking forward to getting to explore? But then can you also pinpoint a quality that you found along the way that wound up being more creatively fulfilling to play with than you could have imagined at the start? Hmm. I think I felt in in Maddie's uh, journey in this film that there was a point where she got to let out an expression of pure rage, but also pure bliss at being alive and getting to connect with other people and getting to understand uh, yourself as this like always moving and changing like bundle of ferocity and I was excited to um, get to that point but along the way there were so many moments of like uh, like I, I don't know this like this sh like sh shy like but kind of like silly feeling like the moments when Maddie really opens up like when she starts talking about the pink opaque to Owen and like these moments of like wonder that come over her, her I didn't expect those and then when we got to set and when I was working with with both Ian and Justice like those moments felt really alive. I'm obsessed with the pango pink. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the movie definitely had that effect on me. I have to let you all go in a moment. So I'll wrap with our uh, our Filmio question. Again, it's a it's a company that specializes in putting the green light power in the hands of the creator. So can you each recall a time when someone gave you creative control when maybe you didn't think you were going to get it, even though you deserved it? There's like a conver I guess a weird conversation with like music where I mean, I, I didn't sign to a label that was um, like evil bigwigs or anything, but people talk about la like losing creative control as a thing in music a lot. Um, and yeah, I guess uh, I guess like working with a label that is creative and cool um, 
kind of exceeded my expectations about what the content has to be, what it has to sound like, how many songs there has to be. Um, yeah, they kind of just like let me run wild. And I, I, my impression of the music industry is that, or for, is that that's not like a thing that happens. So it's a nice surprise. Glad you have that. <laughs> Thanks. How about for you two? Anything come to mind? Yeah, I did a shoot for Puss Puss Magazine, my friend Minna and I, and we got to play these characters uh, that we perform live as, Silver and Smoke, and they're a ghost punk duo, and we wear long blonde wigs, and they're like really like mean girls, and we got to do the whole shoot as them and like really be like very demanding about everything we wanted, and so that was cool. I like that. I think the God thing is wh what I would go with. Um, yeah, I feel like... Uh, when I realized I could just uh, build my life the way I wanted to build it, and uh, you know, I got gave myself the green light, and here, here we are at the Collider <laughs> Studio. Collider Studio presented by Filmio. Presented by God <laughs> <laughs> and Filmio. I mean, I'll roll with that too. I'm gonna say thank you for your time today. Thank you. Huge, thank huge, you. huge congratulations on I saw the TV glow. These are the kinds of films that people come to Sundance to see. Bold visions that can only be made by a singular director with a team that really supports it behind them. So huge congratulations to everybody out there. Keep an eye out for I Saw the TV Glow and stay tuned. We'll have more interviews for you very soon.